scientific enterprise, the scientific exploration of the universe, is a relatively new thing. It is one of the newest ways that humans have used to make sense of the universe. Faith and philosophy and mythology, even astrology, have been with us for millennia. Science is not. And, of course, the seeds of science, the precedents of science, the threads of science stretch back millennia, uh, but not in this particular combination. Uh, you did need millennia of thought and refinement of thought and technology and refinement of technology before you can get something like modern science. Hmm. Now, this idea of, you know, like the two major misnomers, it seems like people, you know, prior to the scientific revolution in Europe had was that the earth was flat. This is an idea that people have touted. I've also heard that no one actually really thought that, that for most of human history, people knew that it was round and that this idea of a flat earther was like a pejorative that people would use towards, I guess, like non-scientific people. Have you heard this theory before? Yeah. So uh, at the time of the scientific revolution, about 400 years ago, roughly, to be fair, the vast majority of people were subsistent farmers who probably didn't give much thought to anything except trying not to starve. Mm -hmm. And that's that's been true of the vast majority of people throughout human history. We do live, live in a very special time where most people are not starving. Mm -hmm. This is this is a new thing. So there wasn't a lot of uh, brain power left to ask questions about you know the nature of the cosmos. Uh, but people who did think about this and write about it and talk about it had known that the Earth was round, and we've known it was round for thousands of years. Um, most cultures around the world, at least early on, did believe that the Earth was flat. Um, I actually don't know if, say, uh, Chinese thinkers around 400 years ago or South Asian thinkers, um, what their conceptions of the cosmos was. Um, there's also really fun, interesting cultural discussions to be had um like if you don't consider the shape of the earth to be an important question then you're not going to ask that question let alone answer it and so you're not going to have a strong opinion on it because you're thinking about other things um but certainly in europe there had been a tradition of thinking about the shape of the earth and what that means and this was an important question for at least some people who thought about it and uh, they had answered it conclusively the earth was round and everyone knew it was round uh christopher columbus got a lot of flack he was rejected from a lot of his his iner ish, initial early proposals uh to to sail across the atlantic uh because he was going on either deliberately falsified information or just plain wrong information that said the Earth was a lot smaller than we had previously believed mm -hmm. and that a couple months voyage would get him to the shores of Asia, um, which he believed he did, which is why we call it the West Indies, the mm -hmm. western part of the Indian continent. Like that, that is why we call it that, because he thought he was in Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, he was dead wrong. And he was laughed at by a lot of very smart people, not because they thought the Earth was flat, but because they knew it was a lot bigger than good old Chris Christopher Columbus said it was. Mm. Um, so that was simply a debate that was put to rest like 2,500 years ago. Interesting. And then the other debate, I guess, is geocentrism versus uh, heliocentrism. Yes. That the church held on for a long time, that the Earth was the center of our solar system, that all the planets orbited around the Earth as God's divine creation. And then that was found to be not the case the uh, the early appearance of science around 400 years ago and what we call the scientific revolution in the relationship between those early scientific thinkers and the catholic church is much messier and much more nuanced and much more tangled than anyone would care to admit for example uh we can't import our modern scientific sensibilities like i see the world a certain way as a scientist i also see it other ways as a non-scientist but i focus on like uh empirical verification uh rational methods uh strongly verified mathematical arguments etc so you know the foundations of modern science uh we didn't have that 400 years ago because we hadn't invented it yet so you have people like copernicus who initially propose in uh mid to late 1500s that maybe the sun is at the center of the universe the arguments that copernicus put forth some of them look scientific like hey uh if the sun is at the center um then it makes uh, orbits easier to calculate uh, or like it's a better model some of them look very very foreign to modern eyes 
some arguments like, oh, <sighs> so you know how Jesus Christ is the son of God mm -hmm. and he is the light of the world and the center of our faith, right? We've all established that. Well, the son is also the light of the world and should therefore be at the center of the universe. Right. Get it, son, son? This Doesn't is a little this bit make of sense? A, a famine misery type connection. Yeah, exactly. Um, at the time, Copernicus could list arguments that seem sensical and nonsensical to us, but at the time, because we didn't have this strict separation of scientific investigation versus uh, theology versus mathematics, um, he could list all of them, and all of them were taken seriously. His contemporaries are like, oh man, good point, Copernicus. Um, when Copernicus released his book uh, on his deathbed, the book was published, was distributed, was thought about and debated, but at a very, very low level, at a very like elite educated level in early modern Europe, we see people responding to it, uh, distributing copies and going like, huh, you know, interesting thought. And then you get to characters like Tycho Brahe, Johannes Kepler, Galileo, who are like the next generation. Um, Galileo finds himself in hot water. He's, he argues that the sun is at the center of the universe. And this was a topic. Like, what is at the center of the universe? Is it the earth? Is it the sun? At the time, there was no good evidence either way. Copernicus, Copernicus's model was a little bit simpler than the earth-centered model in its ability to explain the motions of planets, but not that much simpler. Um, because Copernicus still had the planets moving in circles. It would take Kepler to figure out that they're ellipses. But before that, if you assume the planets are moving in circles, you're not doing much better mathematically. And then there are extra arguments. If you're like, okay, Copernicus, if the sun is at the center and we're moving, well, how does the earth move? Why don't we feel it? Mm -hmm. Where's the wind? Why don't we slow down? You're saying this has happened forever. How can something move forever? These are valid arguments. Now we have answers to those arguments. It's all gravity and space is empty, but they didn't have those that evidence 400 years ago. So it's a valid debate. And the church is the one organization that is financing these debates, or one of the organizations. Finance, they're financing scholars. They're bankrolling Galileo. Galileo gets in hot water because he insists that the sun is at the center of the universe. Uh, but Galileo, even though Kepler is writing him like fanboy letters saying, I think they're ellipses, Galileo's like, please stop talking to me. You're so such a weirdo. Uh, he ignores it and he thinks the planets move in circles. And then they they grill him on this. They're like, Galileo, you say it's circles, but like that doesn't work. It doesn't explain the observations much better. So what's the deal? And Galileo's like, shut up, they're moving circles. And then Galileo takes it one step further. He's, he's commissioned by the Pope, Pope Urban II, if I, if I got the name right, to uh, write a book. He said, okay, Galileo, we want to sponsor this. Uh, could you write a book expressing both, both views? Uh, one view for the sun-centered, heliocentric universe, one view against. Uh, I, Pope, believe that the, the sun is at the center, but I want to you know, do, do something fair and balanced. And Galileo says, sure, <laughs> writes a book where the character who represents these heliocentric, or sorry, sorry, the geocentric universe, the earth-centered universe, aka the Pope, is basically named Moron. <laughs> a, a moron says the earth is at the center, and then like Smarty Pants says, you idiot, um, this gets him in hot water. Okay. Yeah. You, at the time, this is before Sinead O'Connor, you don't tear up pictures of the Pope. Right. And even then, like, yeah. it, like all the way up until 1992, this was a tough thing to do. Yeah. Um. So of course the church got mad. Should they have put him under house arrest? Of course not. It's heinous. It's horrible. Was it about a rejection of the sun-centered universe idea? Kind of, sort of, yes, but also you have to broaden the her, your picture because it was about much more than that. And these weren't scientists as we currently consider them scientists. They were proto-scientists. These were people arguing from a bunch of a, a variety of opinions and perspectives, theological, philosophical, mathematical, and observational and empirical. 
and to just reduce it to the church was evil and science was trying to break free um, does a disservice both to the church and to science. It, it, it simply wasn't like that. Um, like I said earlier, we eventually grew to accept the sun-centered universe idea, not through any great scientific argument, not through any great empirical observation, not through any great proof, but because horoscopes were easier to calculate. Uh, eventually all that would come. We would understand why we don't feel the wind of the Earth orbiting the sun. We would understand why the Earth doesn't slow down. We would understand why circular orbits don't make sense. Uh, we would come to understand that, but that would actually take centuries. And so to take knowledge that was acquired literally hundreds of years later and apply it to the early days of the scientific revolution it does a gross disservice to... Uh, the people who were advocating for these positions who were all very brilliant people and the people who were advocating against those ideas who were also brilliant people. They just happened to be wrong. Um, but you can't fault them for being wrong. Interesting. That's a cool delineation. This idea that there is an archaic church that is stupid and backwards and, you know, genius scientists that are figuring everything out that are getting persecuted for their genius is a oversimplified and highly oversimplified yeah bordering on just fallacious you know and not that the church including the modern church and the medieval church did not commit innumerable sins and they shouldn't have been burning people alive mm -hmm. and they shouldn't have been placing people under house arrest uh and they should have probably moved faster with the arguments that were being offered um i'm not trying to excuse any of that but also they were burning people alive and putting people under house arrest for a whole bunch of other reasons too. Right. Now, this is a personal thing, but my parents are devout Catholics. Mm -hmm. I was raised Catholic and they are like bordering on geocentrist in the current day. They they yeah. they are toying with this idea that, you know, the earth as God's divine creation is the center of the universe. Uh, I, my mother has floated a few different ideas out that according, apparently NASA uses geocentric modeling when it comes to some of their calculations and that there's a, a, a movement to basically undermine the uh, divinity of God's creation. So I'm curious, is there a, a simple compelling argument that I could explain to, to them about why the universe is heliocentric?